Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. Today, to talk about the Part 2 banner that's going to be coming up in a week from when the event came out, which would be... It was weirdly released on, like, a Sunday. So it'd be the 19th? Or would it be the 20th? It would be somewhere around then. I forget when it usually starts, but it should be either Sunday or Monday. One of the two. Or depending on your time zone, it might be Monday in my Sunday. I don't know. It's weird. But anyway, that, I'm going to talk about the banner and the units that are on it. So let's get into it. So first of all, the units that are on it, the things that are the exact same as the other banner is the fact that they have the exact same CEs. So if you were waiting to summon for this one to get craft essences, then here you go. Also, Izzo and uh, Mori are both in it. So if you were also hoping to try and get more copies of them, like for me, for example, I need more Moris. I already have my Izzo. I like MP5 and he's been that way since he released. So, uh, I'm only, I really, really only need more Mori, but there you go. You can also use this banner to do that. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, and the other units that are going to be on it, which are the main focus, are, uh, Summer Okita, Demon King Nobunaga, which is the Avenger form, and Lancer Ryoma. So we'll start with the four star, which is Summer, uh, Okita. Summer Okita, or Okita J. Soju, say J. Soji, is an assassin. She's three quicks, one arts, one buster. Uh, she ha I think she has a difference in... No, she doesn't. I guess in stages one to two, she's considered a levitating unit, but not on the third one. Um, her active skills are the Jet Tenrin Rishin Ryo, is the A plus increase own crit damage for a single turn. Increase crit star absorption for one turn, then removes one of the latest debuff um, defensive buffs. This is a demerit. Uh, one of your own def latest defensive buffs, which is anything that is to like uh, a she literally anything that is going to keep you alive. <laughs> she removes it. Um, so best to use this one before giving her any form of defensive buff. Uh, her crit damage up is 100% and the absorption is 800% and this is a cooldown of 4. Her second skill is Eye of the Mind J, A minus, uh, and grants self evasion and ignores evasion for one turn, and then increases own MP damage for three turns. Her MP damage up is 20%, and the cooldown is of six. Her third skill, which gets a buff to the Makoto Drive EX, is uh, an increase to own quick performance for three turns, charges own MP gauge, and then increases own MP generation rate for three turns, and then a 500% chance to reduce own defense by 20% every turn for three turns, starting by 10% on turn one, treated as a buff, max 50%. So there's no getting rid of this. Uh, actually, would this get rid of that? Through own latest defensive buffs. It's treated as a buff. Doesn't it? I don't know, actually. Anyway, uh, at level 10, it's 50% quick. There is someone I could ask, but it's too late. 30% MP gain, uh, MP2, MP gauge, and the MP rate is 30%. Uh, her passive skills are Presence Concealment J, B-, Magic Resistance J, C, Existence Outside the Domain, E. Her third append skill is an Anti-Archer Attack Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is a rank C uh, AoE, the Jet Saiden Zuki, or the Jet 3 Stage Thrust. It is rank C, it hits 3 times, it deals damage to all enemies, and then removes their defensive buffs. The defensive buffs include any of the things that I mentioned beforehand about what she removes from herself. And then there's a 60% chance to stun yourself for a single turn, that is a demerit. Um... And the damage is 600% at level 1. At level 5, it's 1,000. And then reduces own defense for 3 turns. Um, and then the charge is 30% at level 1. And if you get it all the way... It's 30% defense at level 1. And if you get it all the way to the final charge, it's minus 50% defense. There's a stage 2. Yeah, apparently there is. That's probably when she's in her third stage and not on a jetpack. But anyway, that is Okito J. Soji. Um, the main issue here is that is this ability here to stun yourself it's really bad it really hurts um does it stop her from getting destroying dudes with her np no not really i think the she has enough like power up to quick and to mp gauge that she should be able to get enough uh even though it's only three hits and three hits is kind of killer in quick unless you're just amazing at mp generation rate um but with her skill she should be able to loop pretty 
pretty nicely, I would say. Uh, the only thing that kind of sucks is a 60% chance to stun self for one turn, but the good thing is, is that at the end of that turn, she will go back to normal, and then you can loop the additional turns, but if you want to do something like attack additionally, which in some, some nodes actually does, is a factor, where you actually want your unit to attack afterwards if you want to take them down, if you're not someone who's going for pure brute force, kill them in one hit kind of go. But yeah, she I think she ends up being okay as long as you know as long as you know to work within her demerits she'll be perfectly fine at aoe farming for you which is the main thing you want to use her in if you're doing your using her for challenge quests then you must be some kind of masochist or really love okita but at that point you may as well just use the saber one that's the one that's kind of built built bitter for that this one's kind of built for farming and stuff like that and being an assassin and quick uh there's actually a lot of quick assassins how many of them are actually effective at um farming i think it's just it might just be hogan if i remember correctly uh that are quick specifically i should say obviously kame is good but she's not really a uh quick farmer she's just someone who can hit can farm it's <laughs> the difference uh yeah hits all in me so this one's definitely kind of the easiest one if you're an assassin and because you get a free mp5 but whatever if you like okita you'll find ways to make it work with okita that's the end up on that one. I still, funny enough, from this summer, she's the only one I'm missing. So I would actually like to get her for that reason, but it's not really on a top priority. I have plenty of quick units, and funny enough, I have plenty of quick AS assassin units as well. <laughs> so, next, Demon King Nobunaga. This is Demon King Nobunaga uh, Avenger. Three, but she's a Buster Gorilla. One quick, one arts, three busters. Um, th uh, her pens, I, I'm gonna say her. I do acknowledge that this is a man, and this is also a woman. It's literally every single Nobunaga. It, it, you would use they, but for all intents and purposes, I am using her <laughs> for this one. But I acknowledge that that would also be correct. Uh, it's a, uh, it's inevitable. Her first active skill. A minus, increase on attack every turn for three turns. See the turn number for exact multiplier for each turn. Wait, what? Increase on attack for every turn for three turns. See that that's a... Okay, 500% chance, they mean this, I just realized. 500% chance to grant self the Burning Battlefield buff for three turns. 500% chance to inflict burn unstangable with 1,000 damage to self for three turns. That's a demerit. Uh, depending on the turn, turn up, turn to 20%. So on turn one, it's 30%. On turn two, it is 50%. And on turn three, it is 70%. Uh, every turn for three turns. Okay. As if it was a dream, the buffed version, B++, grant self-invincibility for one turn, increase on buff removal resistance for one turn, increase on damage against enemies with the sky attribute on the burning battlefield for three turns, buff removal resistance is 100%, and then the burning battle, the burning versus sky damage is 50%. Uh, very specific increased damage against enemies uh, with sky attribute when it's on burning battlefield, but basically whenever you've activated your first skill. And then the third skill is the Demon King of the Six Heavens EX, which grants crit stars every turn for three turns, charges on MB gauge, and then increases own buster performance on the burning battlefield for three turns. Uh, the star regen is 10%, the MP up is 30%, the burning buster is 30%, and the cooldown is 5 The thing that was added here is that she got 10% more MP gain and a 30% buff to the burning uh, to the burning battlefield, which did not exist previously. The Avenger B minus increases. Oh no, I've already. This is the passive skill. Avenger B minus, Oblivion Correction E, and then Self Replenishment Magic C. Her third skill is an Anti Alter Ego Damage uh, Damage Aptitude, which is an increase against Alter Ego enemies. Her Noble Phantasm is the Ranking minus the Hujun Hinjun Sanzen Densen Ten Mao. The Papias Metamorphous, Demon King of the Bajil oh, I thought I said Bajillion, Billion Fold Heavens, Rank A Minus, Buster, Anti Divine, Hit Six Times, Remove All Divinity Enemy Defensive Buffs, and then Deals Damage to All Enemies, and then Inflicts Burn for 1000 Damage for 5 turns to them. The damage is 300% at level 1, and it's 500% at level 5. The Overcharge Effect is a deal and additional damage to Divinity Enemies. 150% at charge level 1, and then if you get it all the way to the final charge level, it's 200%. And that is Demon King Nobunaga. Uh, now that they have their buffs on uh, NA, 
I think that finally means that they are good. Uh, they needed a lot of buffs. This, this noble needed so many buffs. Because <laughs> this is not enough buffs. You see, these are the two buffs you see here. That is not technically the final buff that Nobu got. Nobu got an additional buff in that they made an entire unit whose specific purpose is to only do one thing, and that is to buff Nobus. That is the only thing Nobukatsu does. And they increase the crit damage, the star absorption. They um, they have this Noble Phantasm, which literally increases the buffer buster performance for Nobunaga allies by 20% for three turns. And then he just nopes out of there. He charges party's NP gauge, except for the self, so he gives her an additional 20%, and then it also an increase to... Buster performance for three turns, it, uh, which is only 10% if it charges level one, but if you get to the final charge, it's 30%. Uh, point is, they've been trying to give this Nobu a lot of buffs, and now she's finally at a point where she's pretty solid, and you can use her in a variety of different ways. It helps that Vich is out here now, and her cooldowns are low. Like I said, it's five, uh, six, and five, which is perfectly respectable in terms of how long they are. So that makes it so that you are going to have this ability up and this uh the burning battlefield up basically for six i mean yeah six turns you give it about or take it should be enough to take out whatever you're going for um the mp uh up being 30 percent is kind of a bummer but you can make it work with specific team comps and uh craft essence choices and stuff like that so it's not like an end of deal deal breaker and stuff but either way she is good, so you can finally <laughs> make use of it. And so for all the people who were able to pull her back in the day, congratulations for waiting so long. It took a lot of buffs, but she is, I would say, good and usable as opposed to where she was previously, where she was not. Like, for example, she didn't get any of the attack buff. She only got 20% MP gauge. It was literally all 100% carried by, like, did nothing against the bonus against Sky. Now at least you can say that she has a thing to do, which is to fight Divinity Sky AoE dudes. That was always the kind of the bummers that it's like, yeah, you're not really... It, it's funny enough, in single target fights, you do fight a lot of Divinities. But when it comes to AoE, you're not really doing that much. But I guess it kind of depends on the nodes and stuff like that. It's a very situational and niche, but either way... You can find uh, uses for her now that are that will be good. This build here as well, where you can do this. But yeah, there you go. Nobu Nobu uh, Nobu 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 Naga Demon King. And finally, this is the new unit, Sakamoto Ryoma Lancer. Uh, he is a Lancer, like I said previously. He's a one quick, two arts, two buster. His first skill is the Dragon of the Reformation A. Increases party's uh, arts performance for three turns. Increases party's crit damage for three turns. And then overcharges party's NP by one stage for one time three turns. The arts up is 20% and the crit damage up is 30%. Uh, his third skill... His third skill... His second skill, which is his normal ability, not when he is an enemy NPC, is the White, the white Orochi of Takuchi... Let's go with that. Charges his own MP gauge, increases his own buff removal resistance for three turns, and then grants self the debuff immunity for three turns. NP up is 50%, the buff removal the resistance is 100%, and the cooldown is of six. And his third skill is the Ama Amasakuyohoko Dual B. Increases his own arts performance for three turns, as well as buster performance, and then gain crit stars for three turns as well. 30% arts, 30% buster, and 10 star regen on a cooldown of 6. His passive skills are Magic Resistance C+, Writing EX, and Shapeshift Orochi A. Uh, his third append skill is Anti-Alter Ego Attack Damage Aptitude as well. And his Noble Phantasm is the... Oh god, help me on this one. Ryu Yo Watatsumi no Haro Wo Yoki, or My Dear Go Conquer the Oceans of Watatsumi. Uh, it is a 3-hit... Arts, Noble Phantasm, EX, Rank EX, Anti-Army. Increases his own defense by 50% for a single turn. Activates first. It then deals damage to all enemies. Uh, with damage being 450% at level 1. And then at level... If you get him to be level 5, it's 750%. And then increases his own MP damage for 3 turns. Um, it is... Wow, for 3 turns? The charge at level 1 is 20%. And if you get it all the way to level 5, it is 40%. And that is Ryoma. Uh, Lancer Ryoma is pretty good. The only issue that he has is that there are better 
lancers that are four star <laughs> and also arts. It's actually a very competitive category. Um, but he, what he does here makes him solid enough that you can 100% use him and you should be fine. Uh, the worst that you'd have to probably look at, yeah, I think you should be fine because even if you do this one, you do it for one time, three turns. It helps a lot that he's getting some NP damage, so that'll help a little bit. Getting only three hits on a... Three hits isn't as bad as it is on quick, typically, but it is not great. But he does have, like, a 50%, like... Listen, when it comes to arts units, it's a little bit different because Castoria carries a lot of them. <laughs> so, with how much NP gain you're getting, it should be enough to at least get to 50%, which is, like, the happy medium that you want to get to because at that point if you're using a ce that is typically either either you're using a 50 percent one that gives you np gain so then you're using his second skill to charge his own mp gauge so you're at 100 percent, and then you're doing a bunch of that you do to that basically what you always want to do is that you want to maintain 50 percent when he's finishing doing his double phantasm and if he's not that then you have to make concessions in your team building to get it done and you should be able to do that without much issue at least looking at what he does here uh, and yeah and just in general i think he's good but he's also again if you're looking obviously you got fee and mccool who is a four star <laughs> lancer and he's also very good at farming and he can do it pretty easily and he can be your, huck your huckleberry if that's what you want um but if you're a big fan of ryoma like i am and or you or oreo then he'll work out perfect for you because he'll be able to do what you want, which is grind, uh, AOE grind, and it's not going to be that much, <laughs> not much hassle, I would say. At least I can say that based off of what he looks here. And yeah, that's the banner. Uh, should you summon on this banner? Is That is a question that you're going to ask me. First of all, if you like any of the units that are featured here, you should summon. Um... Because that's what you want. So if you've been saving up all this entire time, don't let me stop you from summoning, regardless of what I feel about units. I only read what they do, in case you're curious about what you want to, <laughs> you want to know what they do. But in general, if you want to go for Demon King Nobunaga, or you're one of those dudes who went for her when she was bad, um, I was one of those people. I failed to get her. I wasn't strong enough to get them. AKA, I did not have enough money to get them. Uh, and... What was I saying? Anyway, I think if you're someone who likes them, you should go for them. But if you're someone who isn't, you're likely good to just kind of like pause and keep on waiting. We have Thanksgiving coming up and that's going to have... Um, that's going to have dudes who we don't know who are going to be on it. But in previous years, it's been pretty popular units. And based off of them returning some units in ways that were unexpected... I really do think that they're going to do something crazy, which would be kind of nice to have a... It's nice to be prepared in case it's something that you care about. So I would take a look at what potential units have not been run... Actually, that doesn't matter either, because they've been bringing back units that are in, like, crazy intervals. Like, um... Assassin Lee coming back in, like, not that many months ago. And it's like, wait, what? Why did he come back and stuff like that? So I don't know. It's, it's always... It's better to be cautious... And if you're someone who's definitely, like, not a big fan of any of the units featured here, then you can obviously wait. If you're a huge fan, go ahead and summon. And if you're a fan, but you're also free to play, it might be a good idea to kind of, like, hold back and at least hold back as long as you can. The event goes until... Let's see. The event goes until... 26th. So that's not going to be announced by then. But that should give you at least a good amount of time to be like, okay, am I going to pull the trigger on this? Yes, no. And then, boom, you can do it. Unfortunately, we won't know anything until it's close to Thanksgiving time. And when is Thanksgiving? Um, Thanksgiving 2023. Oh, it's November 23rd? What? Then yes, you should wait. <laughs> you should wait, because in a week is when we would actually know... Uh, Oh, and then we have Black Friday stuff. They might throw something else out there for that as well. I don't know. But at least for Thanksgiving, you can definitely wait a week. Because this is here until the 26th. So you're good to wait and not like, go crazy for that long. This banner should be up here somewhere somewhere in the 19th to 20th. And then we should get details on Thanksgiving sometime on the 22nd, I would say. 21st, 22nd, maybe. 
And yeah, good luck out there. If you end up summoning, feel free to tell me how you did. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. You guys have a good day. Till next time, everyone. Peace out.